Hey everybody, Jeff here and I'm coming to you from the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Harbor Beach Resort. And today I'm going to show you, even though I'm on vacation, and when am I really on vacation folks? Those of you that know me, you know I'm never really on vacation. But I found some issues here in the garage that I wanted to share with you because this really affects all of the garages here in Florida. What is this? Man? Oh my gosh. So I wanted to show you some of the typical things that we found that we would see also at the Champlain Towers in Miami there. So the, that's the condo that collapsed. So you don't think that, well, that was only the issue over there. But a lot of the problems that we found at that garage there actually exist in a lot of garages around South Florida. So here we are in the parking garage at the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Harbor Beach. And as you can see, they have really big columns here. But then you can see they've also got the pads right above them like this, see? We call these drop panels. And as you walk along and look at some of the other ones, see you have a lot more bolstered strength, I, I think, here. And only that, you see how you got these metal brackets here? So these were missing at the Champlain Towers. They didn't have these on their columns there. But they have them here, see the metal guards? And those are good to have because, you know, I don't think a car could ever cause a problem with a column by crashing into the corner of it. However, having these guards here that um, can really help prevent any kind of shearing into the concrete. Okay, so for example, here you have two big sections of this garage ceiling right here. And this looks like an isolation seam. So this is sort of along the lines of what you would want to do. You want to have them separated so that if one of these sections collapses down, it doesn't take the other section with it. So recording this here during my stay at the Fort Lauderdale Marriott, and you can see there, it's just a perfectly defined gap in there of how they would isolate the two sections of the building. So, you know, Floridians, we see this a lot here in the garages where you'll see water down at the bottom of the columns and you go, oh no, you start panicking. Oh, where did it come from? Is it coming up from underneath? And at first we thought that, but the water ends over here. But then look at this, we're looking up the column and now I can see, see how it's moist there and wet and the water is coming from right here. There's some kind of a leak in this pipe. It might be an air conditioner pipe, which I think, yeah, yeah. It's one of the AC lines because there's the insulation around it, the foam. And, but you can feel that's cold and it's just condensating and sweating is all that is. But see how it creates like a large puddle here? And it's actually made the paint start to bubble up on the stripes on the floor. So for example, here we are in spaces 92, 93, 94 in the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Harbor Beach garage. And I see a big puddle here. Now, I don't know if they were washing some of the beach chairs here, but I do know that when we drove up, I was watching here, water was dripping out of the seam. So this is an isolation seam here. And I just saw another drop come down here. Oh, here it is. You can see it coming right there. You see it? It's all along the ceiling there and it's just dripping there. You see that? I'll see if I can get it and show you. You can see the waters, the droplets are just coming right out of the seam. So, I don't know if that's out front or for out back under the pool deck. We might be under the pool deck, but these are the kind of leaks that you see a lot down here. Now also here, let me see. So also we're here by uh, space 93 and on the other side of this puddle here that I was just showing you, you get this, and I believe this is an AC line that comes out of the ceiling. And what happens is these sweat a lot. That's the air conditioner. And even though you have the insulation around it, you don't have the insulation all the way into there. So you'll see it leak from time to time. And that's how you end up with these bigger puddles here on the floor. So here's space number 96. It's right by their stairs here. And I'm looking at this pipe coming out of the ceiling and you can clearly see this one is dripping here see it dripping right there it's leaking it's coming down from up top so 
Now, I don't know if this is a drain up to one of the planters out on the pool deck or what. I don't know the whole system. I haven't looked at their plans. I don't know if this is a... Um, these are all big metal pipes, so I don't know if this is their sprinkler system or, or what it is, or if it's part of the drainage. Because they could either use PVC pipes or iron pipes to do the drainage here. But clearly, it's coming from up there, and, and it's leaking, dripping down onto the garage floor. And then over, over here we are in space 96, so as we go past it and around the stairs and you look up here, you're going to see stains on the ceiling there, right? And you can see where enough water has dripped through here over the years that this metal conduit here has rusted all the way through. And I can actually see the wire sticking right through. See that? So that's not a good sign. And it looks like whatever was going on here, they put this PVC pipe over here to keep it from landing on the... This is definitely sprinkler pipes right here. But I'm seeing a couple of puddles right here on this floor. And these are dripping down again from this isolation seam. But you can see where they've had water dripping down in quite some time, probably over the years, that it's left stains on the ceiling. We just saw another drop fall down from right here. So I'm, I'm guessing this is coming through the pool roof. So I, I bet their waterproofing up there, if they even have any, is probably worn down. Then as we come over here to spaces 74 and 73, well, you can see we have a slight drip where they've had to use a 55 gallon drum here to collect all of the water that is running down from up above. So I'm estimating we're probably right now um, right under the deck. There's a deck with all those palm trees and the planters. And so, yeah, when you see these kinds of leaks, that means somewhere along the line, water's getting in and we're not telling the water where to go. The ceiling looks, you know, in reasonable good shape. There's no stalactites. I don't see any spalling over here on this section. But definitely, I mean, look at the amount of water that's here now. It's definitely a lot of standing water, a lot bigger than a puddle, and it's got this whole area covered with it. Now here in space 114, they've got a big puddle here. And I can't tell if it's dripping from up top and that it's very dark, even though it looks light on the camera. It's very dark to the eye, so we really can't. I think I see the water dripping out of there. That looks like it might have been an old drain coming up from the pool deck down below. And maybe the pipe got removed and blocked off or something, but it's still leaking. What is this, man? Oh my gosh. Look at this. This is all fresh. This just fell from up above. Looks like it just came down in a big chunk and shattered here. And here in space 111. Scary stuff, folks. Now here's something here that just made me nervous, folks. So look at this. I'm standing in front of space number 111, which is on the westernmost wall of the entire garage, okay? I believe the lobby and the driveway is right above us. But look at this. I'm already seeing fresh chunks of concrete right here that it looks like they've fallen down from right above us. And if you look right up there, that's because that's an area that's spalling. And remember I told you, man, don't don't allow that, that normalization of deviance to get to you. Don't don't think, hey, I've been walking under this for months now and everything's fine. You know, everything's fine until it collapses. That's the problem. But look at this, I'm seeing multiple rebars in there that are exposed. And they got to the point where they rusted so much that they expanded and cracked it and made this drop right here. And this must be fairly recent because I'm sure they have people coming through here and little street cleaners and cleaning the garage. So this is a good learning lesson for you folks. This shows you exactly what happens and how it happens when it starts going downtown on you. You start losing little parts of concrete off the ceiling like this, and before you know it, just like in Champlain Towers, they start losing entire sections that drop down into the garage. 
and it's not far from this other section here. They must have some kind of problem up up top, out front. I have to find out. I gotta. I don't, I don't even know where to. Get. Maybe I can dig out the floor plans if they're on the uh, Broward County uh, site there. We'll have to see. But certainly in this section where you have all this massive amount of spalling right here, you know, somebody should have been looking at this going, oh, this needs to be fixed, you know. I'm not, I'm not concerned really right now that this is, says that the whole place is going to collapse. As would any structural engineer would probably walk in here and not be concerned that it's going to collapse tomorrow. But it's something that really does need to be fixed now, right? Like how many of you sitting at home watching this right now think, oh yeah, this is okay. Yeah. So when we look at this, we think there's some kind of major systematic issue going on up top here that really needs to be looked at. And I think when, when a hotel or a high rise or you know multi-level family dwelling unit, when they have like the PE engineers come in and and look at these and then and then come up with a, a fix for them they should have a second person look at it a peer review i mean that's what's required for bridge designs here in florida for f dot and all that stuff so they should really do the same thing in situations like this you know put a second set of experienced eyes on it and you can see the rusting on the pipes already from where it's been dripping down on top of these pipes what happens now when this finally decides I want to rust through, and these might be sprinkler lines? Oh, ho, ho. Call me when that happens. I want to be here with my camera. Hey, and you know what though? As I look up, I think we are starting to see the beginnings of some stalactites up there. See that? Now this is up probably about uh, maybe 15 feet over my head, so. It's hard to zoom in and get a good clear shot of it, but you can see there's more there. And it looks like somebody may have already been here and examining it, looking at the lines and marking the lines. But I don't see any scaffolding here and anybody working on it is what I don't see. Okay, so here's where we run into a problem, I think, with the normalization of deviance that you see going on right here. What happens to this concrete now, to the strength? See, let's say the architect designed this and said this has to be 6,000 PSI concrete. Is there anybody in the world right now watching this that would look at this right here and say, yep, that is still 6,000 PSI concrete. Not in a million years. So that's why things like this lead to bad things. This may not be the main root cause, but it could be one of many root causes such as this such as overloading or over overweight added on there you know the hotels and condos they like to remodel their rooms over the years they add these uh, the, the you wouldn't believe the impact sliding glass doors on these balconies that we have and and I got a corner suite where there's lots of them they're heavy as heck I mean really heavy they're hard to open they are way heavier than what they were originally put in these buildings and then all the new tile floors and the granite countertops that they've added. Just like I showed you with our Miami condo collapse video with the Champlain Towers, how all the residents over the years were remodeling with floor to ceiling tiles. But in my opinion, this concrete is no longer rated at what it was built for. So what I think could be a tragic irony here is this concrete is underrated. Even though it was rated when it was built, it's underrated right now as we speak and I'm gonna go and get out from underneath this. <laughs> now from here, we can't really say for sure where it goes because it, I mean, this whole thing's a big soffit or, or an upstep, or maybe there's a room there where it gets pumped. We just don't know where they take it from there, but we do know that the water is sloping down and going here, but check this out. We got some spalling up there in the corner. You see that? Look at this, you get about a three-foot section of exposed rebar and that's not good I mean they should really start looking at getting some of those patched up according to the iCry methods ICRI and same with over here around the corner from it see right up in the corner there you got looks like two maybe even a third piece in the middle there of exposed rebar and it's already 
corroded and you can see how it's expanded far beyond its original dimension there, especially in that jagged edge, right? So I'll show you where we are here. We're in front of space number 66 and 67. We are on the easternmost wall of the inside of the garage. This is a massive garage that just runs all the way under the whole property. See, so it goes way down to the, to the north end of it there. So the ocean is over here on this side. But again, I like these columns with the pads on top, which are a great improvement over what they had at the Champlain Towers down in Surfside. This gives you better resistance against punching shear right here. This is um, not my completely preferred method, but it's an, it's an upgrade from just running the column into the concrete. Because when you do get the punching shear, you'll see it gives you that mushroom top that'll go that way and that way at like a 45 degree angle or so. So, and then of course they have the good metal plates here protecting them so you can't ever say that a car was responsible for knocking these columns down these are thick too these here um, look like they're about 20 inches okay so now here in space number 156 we also see a big puddle but I'm having a hard time determining where it's coming from except the source of it seems to be like maybe this column and you can tell there's some runoff. This is wet right here. So something's dripping on it from above. These pipes are pretty dry. This is the fire system. However, look at this. You can, if you look closely up there, you can see daylight poking through right there. See that? So I don't know if that's a, a surface room upstairs there or if it's part of the parking deck but you can see those those sparkles of light there there's daylight coming in through and if there's daylight that means that could be potentially from rain because it is raining outside right now just very lightly and it goes down underground so they must have a pump somewhere I don't know um, I thought I saw out on the pool deck a really deep uh, well system that goes like down with a where there might be a, one of those floating some pumps in there okay so then over here in front of spaces 74 and 75 where I showed you the dripping from the ceiling into the barrel over there see there's your water yeah. it's got me what has me a little bit concerned here is just this little bit of spalling I mean this is something something that this right here is something that they can correct easily and it won't take a whole lot of effort because right here, there's your rebar, and it's crumbling, folks. You know that? See that? So it's already expanded beyond its dimension of the, the rebar rod there. And usually when you see a visible amount of spalling, there's going to be a few more feet of it, likely. So they'll have to, like, dig all of this out. In fact, I'm willing to bet that whatever length of rod they had here, the whole thing is probably bad. Because down here, about six, no, this is about maybe ten feet away... We have more exposed rebar right here that's spalling. And you know what, you would think, you know, at some point, this is what I always wonder about in garages, when you see this chunks that come down, that means they're on the floor somewhere. Somebody at some point should have said, oh, hey, we got stuff falling off the ceiling. We better look at getting this patched. So I don't know why they haven't. And I'm starting to see cracking right here. See that? I'll try not to disturb it too much, but yeah, you can see the cracking of the concrete right there. This concrete is just hanging and resting on top of the conduit here, otherwise it would have fallen off. And the spalling continues over here. So I've got about 10 feet long of spalling, some visible and some not. And that's what you're looking at here in this garage. And this, folks, is what we see a lot of in garages down here in South Florida. All right, and then check this out. So now about 10 feet over from where we showed you that spalling, Look at this, we have another one that's starting up right here. They only start small, folks. You got some of the tie, and then you got a little bit of the rebar right there poking through. Most people might walk by that and not notice it. Most people may see the rebar and not give it a second thought there. Most people might see the flooding here and not give that a second of thought. And so this, over my shoulder, folks, and then this right here, and then this right here over my head, all right, this is what we call normalization of deviance. 
and back here over two. Normalization of deviance. When you think everything's okay and you solve the problem by putting a bucket under it instead of actually solving the problem, that's what leads to failures down the road. Okay, so here's an interesting case what they did with this column. So they gave it a nice beefy pad here. And then let's, this looks like the, uh, a, a jump up in a level from the pool, from a pool deck here, to another column, to another pad. And that's the, that's that raised deck area above the pool. Then way over here in the southeast corner of the garage, you see this, see there's more planter drains coming down. And over here too, See, and they're grabbing a third one over here, right there, see that? And so all of these are getting wide together and leading to a fourth one there and they kind of go out this way and they're capturing another major drain right over here. And this is one of the big exhaust fans that takes all of the smog and pollution from the garage here and it sends it outside and up through the vents. This might be what I saw down out on the pool deck looking down. Yeah, and so over here by 86, 87 there and space is 95 and 96 there and then there's the stairs, right? So as we show more of this area that that leaked between the seams here and you can see this is just it feels moist all the way down that's why you can see the water droplets see they're coming down on me right now you can see them all so right along this isolation seam you can see all of that water dripping down see you just you see the drops coming down in the middle of the screen there there's another one there yeah so you can just see it the water's pulling up right there and dripping off of that isolation seam where the two slabs come together the two sections of the ceiling. So anyway, my guess is if you ever had a collapse right here on this pool deck, chances are it would not pull down the rest of the building, which, I, which is over here. The hotel part is over on this section here. So I'm willing to bet you would not have a catastrophic failure that would take the, the whole building with it. It's hard to tell because I can't tell if they're still connected up there or not. But let's check a look, take a look at this here. Here's another major section of spalling starting right here. So this has been going on for some time. I mean, you can tell how, dang, that's like totally disintegrated. I just touched it and a chunk came off of it there. But yeah, look at that, how the, the two crisscrossing rebar is there. And you, you can see it's all cracking there and it's spurting out from there. So you can see major chunks have already fallen off of here. But yet, it doesn't look like anything's been done. I would be hopping on that in a heartbeat, man. Now, over here, by spaces 154 and 155, see where we're at here. We see another kind of a big puddle of water here. And it's most likely coming from this isolation seam I was watching to see where the drops of water were coming from. I don't see it. So here we are on the westernmost section of the garage. This is the southwesternmost section. So we're probably directly either under the lobby or we're under the, the drive up area. I just can't tell uh, from here without seeing the floor plans where we're at. But again, major isolation seam that runs here, right? It runs all the way down to the complete east to west, right? But we see stains right here where it has probably leaked. And I think we see, I don't know if it's current leaks or past leaks, but there's some stains there. This might be planters out in front of the front door. I just don't know. But again, all of these come in, they Y together, they drain off of the slab, they come in here and they all go into the walls, they slope down and they disappear into the infrastructure. So on the west side, all of these drains that come through the deck, they all go into here and they disappear into the wall where they go out to the city. Okay, so just when I thought we were safe and I was thinking, okay, so here we are under the main part of the hotel building itself. 
and I was just thinking, hey, there's no major, you know, flooding or puddles down here, which I'm right, there aren't any. But then I stopped and looked up and look right above me here. Look at all of this massive amount of spalling that's going on right under this drain line right up here. You see this? See this drain line? Let me show you. We'll zoom in up there to you. What you're looking up right there, that's about a 12 inch section of spalling. Then a couple of feet away, that's about a three foot section of spalling there. But you can see clearly the entire rebar. And as we move down the pipe, there's much more degrading sections along here. It's gets, you know it's bad when you start to see the cross members also. And it's about, that section right there is about two feet wide. This is a six foot six inch clearance. Let's go right here. Oh man, it's nice and breezy here now. So you can see it just stopped raining. It was raining a little while ago. And usually in the garages, rainwater coming in from the street is not really a problem. You can see the tracks, how the cars drag in the water, but it gets caught by this line drain at the bottom. And then usually, just a few feet past it and there's really you, I never usually see water puddling here you know and same thing with the exit side of the garage too if we look over here any water that comes down makes it to the line drain at the bottom they all have that all garages pretty much have this and you have an underground garage okay so now the entrance that we came down the ramp is right here and we can see over here just to the west of it is I'm seeing this puddle here on the floor and I'm wondering, wondering where is it coming from now I see the drips of water coming down and you can see it's coming from a hole that's in the ceiling right there right above the sprinkler line there okay. so it looks to be about 20 feet or so west of this wall corner right here this column that might be a column there but yeah you can see the water is just coming right out of there pretty sure that's not supposed to be there then over here on the ceiling just a few feet away from it you're seeing this large like a, it looks like a big slice is going to come off of here like it's a delamination and that is likely the beginning of a large piece of spalling because when the rebar rusts and it expands and it starts to force chunks of the concrete away, that's what happens, you see. And I'll show you where we are in relation to the entrance. So we would, your car comes down here into the garage and you come this way. So we are right in front of spaces 88 and 87 is where this is at right here. And I can still see it dripping down there, sprinkling on there. And remember, all of this is likely because it just rained. So maybe they don't have this problem all of the time, but maybe only when it rains, but they shouldn't have it at all. You should never have problems like this leaking down into the garage. Okay, so now here in the area of spaces 90, 91, 92, we have more water on the floor. And you know, of course you got a leaking hose bib right here. So that's leaking. That's gonna cause problems at the bottom of this column here for sure at some point. But I think it doesn't look like the this dripping here is likely causing this. Because I saw a few drops come out of the ceiling right here, right along this step up on the wall. I can see the drops of water right there. So let's take a look at what we have up here. This wall here looks particularly nasty. Now, it's kind of dark, even though the camera is showing it lighter than it looks. But it looks to me like there may be a difference in two different types of slabs coming together there. And that can be an area where you have leaks from time to time. When you have two different layers that are sandwiched, one on top of the other. And somewhere a leak develops and it's going to find its way out and it finds the seam between the two. Now, I should point out, for the most part, the ceiling in this garage is in reasonably good shape. The paint is okay. 
I don't see any stalactites growing anywhere. You can see the imprints from the wood when they originally made the ceilings in here. But I don't really see any stalactites or anything like we saw in the Champlain Towers from our friend Fiorella Terenzi's video when she took that tour through the garage. See, and what gets me, folks, is like a lot of these things that I'm showing you are simple fixes. Like this one here. Here's another one over by Space 77. Right here. Here we are by Space 77. And you got another hose bib over here, and it's just dripping. It's a very common problem. We have a video that we put up about how to fix your, your gate valve like that when it drips. I mean, a lot of these are very simple. Sometimes you just turn the, the, the nut there, quarter valve, and that's nice. It's not even bolted to the wall. Okay. Or you can put more packing material in there. Or better yet, get a quarter turn ball valve, which is much more reliable, and put a lock on it. So I think that one is the cause of this whole puddle over here by 77 and 76. Yeah, so looking again over here by 152, 153, this is 154, this is 155, and I can see just large amounts of water on uh, the floor here. But there is a pretty decent drip coming down. I saw some of it dripping down from right here. And man, you know, I wish I had brought my moisture meter to test certain areas of the ceiling over here and some of the, the bases of these columns. But you know what? I was packing up to come here and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, am I on vacation or am I working? What am I doing? I wasn't planning on doing anything until I got here and started to notice these puddles hanging around all of the, some of the columns and stuff down here. But in reality, most of them, it appears it's the water's just running near the column because it, it, it tends to kind of slope towards that direction. Now, I couldn't find a source for this one, but I suspect it looked like it was running from down there over to here. So at least so far, I haven't seen any evidence that would tell me there's any water rising up from underneath from the water table through the bottoms of any of these columns. And the columns all sort of look like they're in good condition at the bottoms. Okay, so now as we look around this entire garage, you can see there's probably close to 200 parking spaces here in this garage. And just think, folks, they charge $39 a day for you to park one car here in this garage. And so they're probably bringing in close to $7,000 a day, I would think, depending on the number of spaces. And you would think with the amount of money they're bringing in every day that they would start doing some of these repairs on the concrete before it gets out of control. All right, so it appears there's more than one of the 111 spots because this is the one that's on the west side wall. That's where this spalling was occurring on the ceiling there. So anyway, there we can still see the chunks of the concrete that looks fairly fresh that just fell onto the floor of this garage here at the Marriott Harbor Beach Resort the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Harbor Beach Resort. Okay, now as we come up behind the, the elevators are here. This is the vestibule, the little lobby in the garage. There is a big puddle here, it's sort of a mystery. I looked up on the ceiling here, I don't see any smoking gun, no leaks, no cracks above it that would be dripping down any water. So this one's a complete mystery, unless somebody maybe just dumped a cooler when they came back with their car. And here's my car, safe and sound. So um, I don't see any leaks or cracks or anything suspicious around it. That makes me worry. And it's got some nice big columns in this area too, big and thick. Yeah, some of these columns here near my car have real beefed up bases on them. Like check this one out here. The column comes down to here and you got this massive footer and then like most garages, we have a little vestibule lobby in the bottom, just like the Champlain Towers did in Miami. But everything looks reasonably good around here.